Hey guys, today I have a very quick and hopefully very helpful English speaking tip to share with you. It's about the passive voice. Have you heard of using the passive voice? Does it sound kind of unnecessary and scary? Well, it's actually super practical when you want to avoid blaming someone or pointing the finger of blame. Why did you do that? You have other options. If you want to be smoother socially, if you want to be diplomatic politically, and if you want to be smart in business situations where it's not prudent or helpful to blame someone, then the passive voice is your friend and you want to know how to use it. The passive voice is often used when we don't know who did something. We don't know who the subject is, so we might say someone did something, but we can also use the passive voice and no subject. Uh, for example, the crime was committed. We could use the pronoun someone if we don't know, but then we have to say someone committed the crime. We could also just say the crime was committed. This is passive voice and you'll often hear this in news reporting. So you can use the passive voice to express if you don't know who did something, but it's also super helpful if you don't want to blame someone for something. For example, let's say that all of my friends went out to lunch without me and I was sad about it. So I wanted to talk about it with my friend and I say, Hey, uh, you didn't invite me to lunch. This is active. This is blaming. This is kind of accusing my friend of being rude and not inviting me. Or I could express this in a more polite, softer way and say, I wasn't invited to lunch or question. Why wasn't I invited to lunch versus why didn't you invite me to lunch? So you notice with the passive voice, we're not using a specific subject. There's no you, there is no name like Jenny. Why didn't you invite me to lunch? Uh, there is no subject. So we avoid, really putting an emphasis on the subject. We don't put any emphasis on it. We completely delete the subject and we just say, I wasn't invited to lunch versus you didn't invite me to lunch. We start with the object. I, or well, me turns into I, I wasn't invited to lunch. So we use the object first and then helping verb to be, and then the past participle, uh, so invited, I was not, so it's negative, invited. Why? <laughs> so this is a good example of how you might use this socially in order to avoid blaming someone. We can use it in a lot of different ways. Like, uh, let's say you can't find your keys and you're talking to your partner and you don't want to blame your partner for losing the keys or leaving the keys somewhere. So you don't want to say, where did you leave the keys? You're always losing the keys. <laughs> maybe you can say, where were the keys left? Or maybe you can ask this as a question, where were the keys left or the keys were lost. I wonder where they could be versus you lost the keys. This is very accusatory and can sound rude. Of course, if you want to start a fight, don't use the passive voice. You would be much better off using the active voice to start a fight. <laughs> but if you don't want to start a fight, if you don't want to blame someone directly, then use the passive voice. Another example, John ate all the ice cream. I can't believe it. I wanted to eat some ice cream versus passive voice. The ice cream was eaten, completely eaten. It's gone. So we don't know who ate the ice cream. Maybe we can guess, <laughs> but we're avoiding blaming John for it. So I hope you can see how we can use the passive voice to avoid blaming someone when we speak English. Now it's your turn. I would love to invite you 
to create your own example sentences in the comments. We can inspire each other with more examples and help each other by correcting and making sure that they're clear and correct examples in the comments. So please leave yours. I would love to see what kind of examples you come up with. And as always, if you would like to improve your English speaking with Go Natural English with me at GoNaturalEnglish.com, then you can get information about the complete Go Natural English course at GoNaturalEnglish.com slash pre-reg. And there you'll enter your name and your email address to get information to join the course when it opens just a few times a year. So it's important that you join the pre-registration email group to get an invitation when the course opens up just a few times a year. So I'll see you there at gonaturalenglish.com slash pre-reg. And you can explore the gonaturalenglish.com website where you can find hundreds of free English speaking tips just like this one. So thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.